Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is gonna be my reaction to the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. My in-depth frame-by-frame breakdown of all the Easter eggs will come tomorrow, and my breakdown of Jonathan Major's photo shoot is coming, uh, uh, well, that's just for me, for academic reasons. Um, and anyway, let's uh, react to this trailer, and afterward, I'll give my initial thoughts on the big highlights and the big moments. Here we go. Oh, is Melton John playing here? Questions. Scott, you're at Oh, XCon. goodbye, Elbic Road. We're doing so many Wizard of Oz references in the MC that right now. That doesn't make sense. But everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. Ah, Big Stinky! I love people that actor so much. That. That's why we made this. It's like a satellite for deep space, but Quanta. Wait, wait a minute. You're sending a signal down to the quantum realm. Uh-oh. Turn it off. Now. So there's some similarities with the Comic-Con trailer and the D23 trailer, but they're, they're leaving a lot out so far. Making me think they're gonna put new stuff that we haven't seen in there. Oh, interesting, like church uh, 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 chord version of this. Where are we? Oh, wow. This is reminding me a lot of Loki, right? Like we're seeing some bizarre landscapes. It's super surreal. It looks awesome. Man. A secret universe beneath ours. Looks like a brandy snap. What are you so afraid of? There's something I never told you. Ooh. This place. <gasps> this is all new. Oh, he's got an army. Oh, this looks amazing. Oh, wow. The characters look so cool. I can get you home. And give you more time. What is that? If you help me. So... What's it gonna be? Batman. Yes! King of the Conqueror! <laughs> oh, this movie's going to rock! This one is going to be so much fun to break down. And again, my Easter egg breakdown is gonna come out tomorrow. I'm really gonna need some time to go through frame by frame through all these uh, new visuals, these insane quantum realm landscapes, this civilization and this empire that Kang has built down there. Now look at my hair. Yeah, it looks healthy, right? Like healthy enough that you might be thinking, hang on Eric, did you send your hair to a spa for a weekend getaway? Well, the answer is no, I did not. My hair is healthy thanks to geology. I know you're all thinking geology, isn't that the 13 times award winning skin care company with over 5,000 five-star reviews? Well, yes, they are, but now they also do hair, and I'm super excited about it. Geology has a new custom control hair care line with brand new Co-Wash. Co-Wash is an anti-shampoo. Shampoo strips your hair of the essential oils the scalp produces and can leave your hair dry and your scalp dry too. Typical shampoos use harsh chemicals to clean your hair, but Co-Wash uses friction and scrubbing motion to remove the dirt and grime from your scalp, keeping your hair clean and healthy without damaging it in the process. Because this good air comes from having a healthy scalp. Co-wash focuses on cleansing and nourishing the scalp, removing the buildup and cleansing the hair without big lather, harsh ingredients, or stripping the hair of its natural oils. Co-wash puts you 100% in control of your clean based on how much product you use, how long you use it, and how often you apply it. Think of co-wash as your skincare for your scalp and your hair, because ultimately, hair care is skincare. Geology hair products are great for all hair types and are color safe, and you can either get a cooling co-wash with tea tree and aloe, or a smoothing co-wash with avocado and coconut. I'm a tea tree and aloe kind of guy. Why? Because you can never be too cool. To celebrate the launch of their new product, they are hooking you up with this unbelievable special offer. Click the link below to get 70% off a skincare trial. But not only that, use the second link to take an additional 15% off the new co-wash, which is already 15% off for the pre-order. You're not going to want to miss this offer. And to be clear, this is Kang the Conqueror, who's an alternate timeline variant of He Who Remains who we saw in Loki. They are different characters, so that's why you can already tell Jonathan Majors is doing a completely different performance for this version of Kang than what we saw in Loki. That variant of Kang was uh, more of like a Shakespearean puck 
trickster, one who liked to jump on furniture and giggle. This Kang is king. He's a conqueror. He's smug, he's detached, he's bitter. Now the question is, what does he need Scott Lang's help with? Now the D23 footage went into a bit more detail here. He says that he needs help finding something that was taken from him. He also told Scott, you're an Avenger, haven't I killed you before? Which tells us that this Kang in other timelines has completely murdered all the Avengers. This guy is vicious. But the fact that he needs Scott's help recovering something that was taken from him tells us that this is going to be, in some ways, a heist movie in the same way that the first two Ant-Man movies were. And though this trailer doesn't seem to show it, the answer to where this stolen thing is, is in time. We're looking at another time heist, just one that's going to look pretty different to what we saw in Avengers Endgame. And we have to talk about the song choice because it is perfect. Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, a semi-autobiographical song about Elton John wishing that he could return back to his days before his startup where he could just go back to his home. It's using the extended metaphor of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, which has been a crazy recurring thing in the MCU right now. We just had Werewolf by Night that ended with Judy Garland singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow as things shifted into Technicolor and Elsa Bloodstone was kind of a Dorothy figure in that story. And then in Loki, He Who Remains, this Kang variant presented himself as a literal man behind the curtain. He was a Wizard of Oz, using his robotic puppets, making people walk down this long aisle to finally greet him. Down in the void, it looks like there was an Emerald City and that was the facade he was hiding behind. And when the heroes met him, they realized he was kind of a con man who used machinery. There was more science and engineering than wizardry to Kang's magic. And that's one thing I really liked about He Who Remains. That seems to be the case here. Kang does seem to have some sort of superpowers, but a lot of his power seems rooted in engineering. He's just a scientist from the 31st century. He doesn't have any godly power beyond that. He's just a, you know, a million steps ahead of us. So this plot is going to involve the whole Ant-Man family, right? So we have Scott Lang, we have Hope Van Dyne. We have Cassie Lang, his daughter, a bit older than when we saw her before, uh, actually recast to the actress who played her in Avengers Endgame, now played by Catherine Newton. She's going to be a member of the Young Avengers, because as Cassie Lang, she becomes stature, kind of a resizing hero in her own right. She has invented this way to communicate with the quantum realm, something that she worked on during the blip. And I really love this idea, because my assumption was that Cassie always thought her dad dusted along with Hope and Hank and Janet. But no, Cassie was able to arrive to that rooftop in the quantum realm van and and conclude from that, no, my dad didn't dust. He's just stuck in the quantum realm. So she always held on to that hope for that five years, but not held on to that hope, this hope. Now this trailer is giving us a close up look of what we saw in 2018's Ant-Man the Wasp, where there was a quantum realm city in the background of the quantum realm. And now we're seeing the full civilization and it seems multifaceted. We have some Sakaran style warriors who greet them on the outskirts of the city. We see that Kang has a freaking army and a fleet that he has built down here. We see other levels of society, like Bill Murray playing what we assume is some kind of leader based off of his finery from the Comic-Con and I believe the D23 footage. We know that he has a history with Janet Van Dyne. They used to know each other. Now, something not shown in this trailer, but it was shown both at the Comic-Con and the D23 trailers, so it's no secret, but some version of MODOK is going to be in this movie. We saw a mechanized robot face. He's not in this trailer, I think probably because they still want to figure out exactly what the look will be with the VFX and the post-production. And maybe it's just really hard to depict this character and let YouTube sleuths live with it forever and ever so we can decode everything about this character and reveal big parts of the plot, which I think honestly is a good way to go. Everyone will go into this movie knowing that MODOK will be in it, but we don't know exactly what form or Modoc will take and where exactly he's coming from. So again, Kang is conscripting Scott Lang to steal something for him from the past or from the future, somewhere in time. And I'm guessing that the way this time heist is gonna look is gonna be a bit more surreal and comic booky, which I really love. Like we get this one really trippy shot of Scott Lang looking up at a larger, I think version of himself or a different Ant-Man. And this Ant-Man unravels, leaving the helmet to fall onto him. Unravels the way that Thanos with the reality stone unravels Mantis, turns into this ribbony structure. It's also not unlike the way Scarlet Witch unraveled Reed Richards. And there's another character sitting at the cafe who has like a semi unraveled head. There may be some kind of like thematic thing going on. Like that is the way the sacred timeline is all coiled together, right? It's a, it a tightly wound coil of endless loops that are all woven together. And what Sylvie did when she stabbed Kang was basically break open and unravel all of that time. So that time kind of spread out in like a, a lightning bolt configuration, a spider web. This could just be what it looks like when you use Kang's technology and you prune something 
or erase something from time. It, it like literally unravels into ribbons. All the timeline elements that kept it bound together are no longer have that gravity. Another thing I want to point out about King's technology that I can't wait to dig deeper into, it all seems to be powered by this kind of like glowing sphere. At about 125, he places that into like a central console with crystals on either side. And a similar sphere seems to occupy not just every ship, every fighter craft that's in the fleet, but literally every single soldier. Like remember, Kang is an engineer who likes to build robots and stuff. Most of the TVA was androids and AI that was running that clockwork. And this could be an army that he built in order to conquer these civilizations down in the quantum realm. Okay, I love this trailer so much. I can't wait to go back through it frame by frame to find all the stuff that we missed. My Easter egg breakdown is coming to the channel tomorrow. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.